This video is going to do a quick walkthrough of the count functions in Excel. It should work for all versions, 2016, 2010, whatever you have. So you can trigger the count functions by doing an equals count. There's five functions, count, count a, count blank, count if, and count ifs. And we're going to step through each one uh, quickly and just see what the function is, see what the output is based on the data that you put in. So the first function is the count. Um, equals count. So basically with this function, you're going to put a range of data in and it's going to tell you how much, how many cells in that range are numbers. So here we have 10 cells with a number in each and therefore our output is 10. And if we remove one, we go to nine, we remove them all, we go to zero. So that's the count function. It's actually a fairly useful function. It's obviously different than a sum or, you know, a lot of the other functions that you can use, but it really is a good way to get a feel for how many, you know, users are in a data set and that kind of thing. Now, the count A is actually a very similar function. Uh, there is there is a small difference and there are some times when you want to use one or the other. You can see using the same set of data, 10 numbers, the count A is actually giving us the exact same output. Count gives us 10, count A gives us 10. Now the reason for that is that the count A is actually counting if there's a value in the cell and the value doesn't actually have to be a number. So where the count is specifically counting numbers, count A can actually count uh, letters as well. So if we do, if we put in A's instead of numbers, now we have 10 A's and the count, the count A actually gives us 10 as well still. Whereas if we do this in the count function, we're going to get zero. And so that's really the difference. It's whether or not there's anything in the cell versus whether or not uh, there's a number in the cell. So the third one is the count blank. And you can see with the same data set, one through 10, the count blank actually gives you a zero. And the reason is that the function performs exactly what it says. It only counts if there's a blank in the cell. And right now there's 10 numbers in the cell, so clearly no blanks. But if we remove one, we get one. And if we remove them all, our output moves to 10. So you can actually use, it, in a way, the count blank is the inverse of the count A. Um, but we don't need to get into that just yet. Now, those are the sort of three basic count functions. There's actually uh, also the count if, which is which is a very useful function, and we'll end up using it in some of the more advanced uh, Excel f functions that we do uh, later on in future videos. So uh, right now I've just set this count if to uh, if any of the data in the dat data range is greater than zero, and uh, note that to do greater than zero, it's actually wrapped in in um, quotes so quote uh, greater than zero end quote and so what this is doing is any number that is greater than zero it's going to return it's going to sum to the count and so therefore there's 10. now if we change this zero to say greater than five clearly not every number in this range is greater than five and what we actually find is that there's only five numbers greater than five six through ten no big surprise but you can start to see how powerful that can be um, and especially when you start you know adding an additional functionality which is the count ifs which actually lets you do multiple and style logic counts so for example i've set this up it uses two data ranges of inputs and basically i'm counting anything where the first um, data the one through ten if that's greater than zero, which we know that every single one of them is, and in the second data set, it also has to be equal to A. And since they're all equal to B right now, we have a output of zero. But if we start changing them to A, we start to get the count. And it's very useful to be able to count based on multiple criteria. And you can actually continuously add criteria. We have two criteria. We can add a third criteria. We could put in a new range and say also this has to occur. 
And these are the sort of formulas where Excel guest starts to get very useful. Uh, and we'll step into them into future tutorials. So hopefully that helped as a basic overview of the count functions. Uh, let me know if you liked the video, actually. More importantly, let me know if there's anything that I missed or, or that you'd like to see, if there's a certain you know, issue you're having uh, in Excel or unable to use the count functions in a certain way. Uh, I might be able to help you on that.